So here we go, hopefully there's no smoke. Three, two, one. Okay, so we want to add some extra IOs onto our old Ender 3V2. Uh, last video I was sort of going over why I wanted to do that, and we found some extra pins on the uh, motherboard or the main board of the printer, so we, we could try and hopefully hack into to get those IO outputs to turn things on and off. I've tried everything, I've recompiled firmware, I've done everything I can to try and get those things to work. They're absolutely not interested in doing anything other than what their job is. Um, I have had some success with the uh, Fluent Sensor, so I can use it as an I.O., but it, it, because it's on a voltage divider, it's never going to zero, and to turn my relay board on and off, I needed to go to zero, so we're out of luck. I just wanted to use whatever hardware was there, I don't want to solder stuff on or make any other changes, I just want to use a plug and plug it into my whatever I want to and make it work. It's just not going to do it. So we're going to have to go down a different route and we're going to start we have to roll this printer back to Clipper. It was on Clipper originally I pulled it off because I was trying to get rid of it uh, and put on the regular firmware. It's not going to do the job so we're going to try Clipper. And what Clipper allows you to do is you can add uh, a sort of a sort of daughter board onto the Clipper board. So the Clipper board for a normal printer you'll have an SD card and you'll put it in your printer and it'll feed out the G code line by line up and running right for the clipper it stores all the g-code within itself it's, I've got a, I'm using a raspberry pi zero and it'll send down the g-code line, line at a time I guess that's what it's doing and then the printer starts doing its thing but because we've got that we can add an additional uh, MCU and I'm going to use a pi pico and then we're going to have our own custom code or custom g-code and when we send that, it's going to talk to the Pico and make it do that. And the beauty of that is we get like 14 IO pins available to us. So if you Googled your way here and you thought this guy's going to show me step by step how to do this, I am not my audience would store me for doing that. What I suggest you do is you Google Fluid Pi and then Google Secondary MCU Clipper and then come back. So we're all set up and up and running and ready to go. So we're just going to go and demonstrate uh, turning on a, a relay through the um, console of uh, Clipper. So here we are in the Fluid Pi UI. It's actually Fluid, but Fluid Pi, it's got a, like a pre-assembled uh, image. You can just copy straight onto your SD card with uh, very few dramas. But once you've gone through all the steps of adding the secondary MCU, you just got to go onto the config. And we just added it here. I've got it plugged into GPIO2 on the Pico. Just over here. Here's my relay board, which is optocoupled. I don't think it really matters with the Pico now. Before I was trying to run it off the controller, but let's not worry about that. And over the back here, we've got the Pi Zero, which is doing all the um, heavy lifting with the Clipper software. So we've renamed it, we've given it a name called Relay. So when we go into the console, uh, down here, I can type in any G code command, moving X and Y and Z or whatever of the printer, but also now our custom G code. So what we'll do is, what I want to do is I'm going to see if it actually works. By typing in the value zero because it wants to go low to turn the fan on. So here we go, hopefully there's no smoke. Three, two, one. And turn it off again, we'll just change the value back to one. So when we have any G code files, we're gonna just chuck the extra line in to turn that vacuum on. Now I don't know how much current that fan pulls, but I know it's a lot. I've got some wires on there. They're not thin, but they get hot <laughs> when it's running. So um, I probably need to look at that, but I'm not going to have it on full speed because it's far too much vacuum. We're going to hook up a like, a like a MOSFET or something. So we're going to adjust the speed with pulse with modulation because it's noisy as well. So if I can slow down the speed, the noise will go down and I just have better control overall. So state of the project so far, we've got the um, OpenCV seeing the images, getting the location, and uh, we can turn the fan on and off. So it'll go down 
as you go down, pick it up, and then turn the vacuum on and move it, and then drop it into a container. So in the next video, we will try and get it going. Thanks for watching.